I haven't done a CCS flip through in a while. And in the celebration of the Muska shoes coming out, I guess I'll pick one of the earliest CCSs that I have, or the earliest CCS that I have with Chad Muska on the cover. The style's a little bit different than you're used to seeing on him. Those are tight pants, as far as he was concerned in those days. And they do have, he does have the, uh, I think those are what, olive or brown and black muskas. This is the Summer 98 catalog. This was before I even started skating. So I'm gonna do a slow flip through. You can pay, uh, pause whenever. I have it angled up against a pair of his shoes just to try to cut down on ridiculous glare. If you want closer pictures of any of this stuff that's in this catalog, um, message me on Instagram and I'll uh, snap it and send it to you as soon as I can. Yeah, that is Wu-Tang Skateboards at the top there. Try to get a little bit closer on some of these smaller parts. Still a few videos on that page I haven't seen yet. Look up Danny Minnick on YouTube. He, uh, 
A lot of his videos, like Genie of the Lamp, stuff like that, they were actually really good. Remember Flex Fits? Nobody in skateboarding makes Flex, flex Fit hats anymore. It's a shame. All you get is those flat brim, structureless, floppy camper hats or dad hats, whatever the fuck they're called. Which I get, like, I get when things are trendy, like every, everybody wants to hop on it and be seen in the trendy stuff. Kind of like baggy pants are coming back and, you know, stuff like that. But for fuck's sakes, at least, you know, like, give people a little bit of variety. <laughs> you don't even... It's like everyone's like, oh, we're we're wearing that one hat now. Everyone's everyone's wearing that one built hat, and uh, what we're all wearing, we're all rolling our our stocking caps, our knit hat hats up to the top of our heads like an unrolled condom. Like, give people fucking choices. Not everybody wants to get out there looking the fucking same. Like just because some people want to wear baggy pants now and get that trend starting doesn't mean everybody's got to hop on it. You don't all have to do it. If you don't like wearing baggy pants, don't. I do. I always have. Doesn't mean everybody in skateboarding has to do it. crazy because like another topic of discussion in, in skateboarding is like where has all the money gone like there's so many skaters skating for like these big corporate energy drinks and shoe companies and you're, you're hearing of skaters now not making any money and having to have side jobs and stuff where when skater owned brands were a little bit more prevalent it seemed like people in the pro and amateur skateboard ranks were actually doing better financially. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's it would be an interesting topic of discussion. I mean, money doesn't have to be taboo. If we were open and honest about the financial expectations of the average skater, I'm not talking about like a Costin or like a, a Andrew Reynolds or somebody who made big money off of a few pro model shoes and are probably still living off of the earnings and royalties of, of those shoes. I'm talking about somebody like Steve Olson, who maybe had a short run uh, pro model for Castell and had pro models for shorties. Like how is somebody like that doing versus, I don't know, maybe a skater who just had sponsors and had no pro model shoes or anything like that. Had a, a few boards here and there. And how's that person doing? If we're open and honest about that stuff, you might uncover some shady shit, some truths, some lies. Maybe we wouldn't have pro skaters that are do uh doing Uber and shit on the side while trying to make money off of what it is they're really trying to make money off of, which is pro skating. I don't know. Even the shoes were a lot different back then. Just straight up. core companies All right, that's it I'll get more at some point